Good morning, Year 5. It is Tuesday, the 19th of February. Our learning objective today is to identify the meaning of words. Okay, before heading into today's learning, I just wanted to go over the questions from yesterday from the text that you read. So, hope you noticed that it was a diary entry and it was entitled The Writing Hut. Uh, dated the 8th of September. So we'll just have a quick read of these four paragraphs here and then we will go on to look at the questions from yesterday. Dear Diary, what a fantastic and riveting day. I informed my parents a few days ago that my new teacher was explaining to our class that next week in school we will be focusing on Roald Dahl to celebrate the author's birthday on September 13th. Dad and Mum suggested a trip to Great Great Missenden, the village where Dahl lived, as a museum had opened to honour Dahl's life and work. I answered in the affirmative. I have enjoyed many of his books and could not wait to find out more about the man behind the written word. Well, diary, I can say that I was not disappointed in the least by our visit. There was so much to learn and absorb about the man. I even took part in a dressing up session in the story centre to find out more. But the one area of the museum that held me with complete fascination was a humble shed. This inconspicuous building was a treasure chest of memories and of life. For this was the actual place where Dahl wrote many of his renowned works. The shed at the bottom of his garden. It has been carefully moved from his home into the museum and every item within it had been meticulously placed exactly as it had been on the day he died. As I stood before the glass divide, I held my breath. My eyes surveyed all the wonderful treats before me. The contents mesmerised me. Everything told a story. I delicately placed my hands on the glass, gliding them around desperate to touch and feel his history. I felt a mixture of emotions, awe and wonder, but frustration too that I was so close to something so special but could not make the contact with objects that Dahl himself had touched. So the, the narrator here writing this diary is quite clearly intrigued and really interested by the visit to the museum. So let's look at some of your questions. The first question was, why did mum and dad suggest a trip to Great Missenden? So we've got an answer here just in red. This is the place where Roald Dahl lived and worked. The author's class are studying the writer at school the following week to celebrate Dahl's birthday. Mum and dad suggest a visit to the Roald Dahl Museum in the village to learn more. So because he's learning about it in school, his mum and dad thought it would be a good idea at the weekend to go and visit the museum as it was so close nearby. Question number two. What does the author mean when Roald Dahl's shed is described as a treasure chest of memories? The shed is an amazing legacy and a wonderful resource of information about the life, work and character of Roald Dahl. So there's lots of little hidden gems in there. And when you think about a treasure chest, it's almost like it's never ending. And there is pr prize and jewel and gem one after the other. Okay, Not literally in this sense, but all of the, the, the objects and items in there. Also on your document yesterday, you had a picture of some of those objects that were in there as well. So that could have helped you answer that question. Last one, question number three. How do you think the author feels as they look at the interior, interior of the shed for the first time? So if we look at this paragraph in particular, this one, this, oops, sorry, this paragraph is all about him looking at the shed for the first time, the author. So first of all, you're saying strong emotions. The author feels slightly overwhelmed and affected by what they see, as this is the actual place where Dahl wrote and it is not a replica. So it's not me. They've actually taken the shed from his garden where he lived and put it in the museum. So it's not just another one reproduced for the, the sake of the museum. We know this because they hold their breath. Here he says, I held my breath. 
they are impressed and entranced by all the items in the shed because the text explains that they are mesmerized. So mesmerized is the same as saying, sorry, where's that word in here? Entranced. Okay, or transfixed is another word that we could think of there. Moving on to the next part of the diary entry here. The author writes, I smiled to myself and thought of the BFG, imagining this six foot five inch tall man residing in this intimate building, his private sanctuary where history would be made, a literary laboratory. The thing that struck me first was that the shed held everything that Dahl required to make his writing experience a comfortable and pleasant one. In the centre of the room was an ancient wing-backed armchair, which Dahl sat in to write his books. The chair had belonged to his mother and had been adapted by Roll himself to make it as agreeable as possible. During World War II, Dahl served in the RAF and was involved in an air crash in the Libyan desert. Forced to crash land, he suffered many injuries, one of which was spinal damage. The chair told this story in a most unusual way. A hole had been cut out at the base of the chair to relieve the pressure and pain on his back, which Rawls still felt many years after the incident. A thin bar heater hung precariously from the ceiling, there to keep the author warm. I deduce this might not always have worked, as laying on the floor near the chair was a sleeping bag and a blanket used by Dahl to huddle into for extra warmth. To the left of the chair was a low wooden table littered with the most unusual and somewhat eccentric collection of objects, but every one of them told a story about Dahl's experiences. Why does Dahl's chair, in which he wrote his stories, a little unusual? So straight away my eyes are drawn to the word chair and the word unusual in this question. I know I've come across that in the text, so I just need to go back through and scan. This part here is all about explaining that. And it also, as well, uses the word unusual, which is in the question as well. So why is it a little unusual? It has a hole cut out at the base to make it more comfortable to Dahl, for Dahl to sit in whilst he was writing. Well, and then it goes on to explain why Roald suffered back pain due to an injury caused by the air crash during World War II and altered, that means changed, the chair. So it alleviated the pain for him a little. So it would take away some of that pain. This was the last part of the diary entry here from the author. But in this section here, it wasn't linked to any of the questions from your worksheet from yesterday. So we will just continue on to today's learning. To recap, the learning objective, remember, was to identify the meaning of words. So how to identify the meaning of unfamiliar words? These are three really key points that we will refer back to throughout this whole lesson. So try to decide the word type. What type of word is it? Is it a noun, a verb or an adjective? It could be an adverb as well. Read the word in context or so read the word in the whole sentence or even around even the sentence before or the sentence after as well if you're struggling. Try to think of synonyms, syn sorry, synonym, synonyms which could replace the word. Remember, synonyms, boys and girls, are just words that mean the same, but they are completely different, okay? Synonym, cinnamon and synonyms, they're quite difficult to say. Have a go. Okay, first word I want us to look at is the word residing. So let's go back to the top tips and we will start with number one. Read the whole word in the sentence. I smiled to myself and thought of the BFG, imagining this six foot five inch tall man residing in this intimate building. So let's think about what type of word this word residing is. Now remember, if I can think, is it a verb? I will always be able to put the word to in front. This word has a root word as well, so it's very, um, untidy writing there, is reside. So they've added the suffix ing. So 
to reside. Does that, is that an adverb, a verb, verb or an adjective? What could it be? So I know that that is a verb to reside, to, to reside somewhere. And now can I think of any synonyms? So when I'm looking around this word, it's talking about residing in some kind of building and I'm imagining a person inside there. So if I was to think of a synonym for that word, it would be maybe living. So let's see if that makes sense. If I was to replace the word residing with living. So I smiled to myself and thought of the BFG, imagining the six foot five inch tall man living in this intimate building. Okay, it fits, it works. So recap, read the whole sentence, try to figure out what type of word it is. Sometimes thinking of root words helps with that. And then can you think of a synonym? So the word residing means to live somewhere. Okay. A permanent place or home where somebody lives. Okay, just jumping ahead a little bit to thinking about what type of word this is. I know that this is in the past tense, so immediately I know that it's a verb. It's in the past tense because it is ending in ed there. Okay, so let's have a little look at it in the context, in the context, sorry, of the sentence. I'm actually going to, because it's in quite a short sentence, I'm going to read from the beginning of the paragraph to see if that helps me. As I stood before the glass divide, I held my breath. My eyes surveyed all the wonderful treats before me. So I'm imagining his eyes darting round, looking inside this shed. The contents mesmerised me. Everything told a story. So he's looking at things. I know it has something to do with looking. And he's very, very intrigued by that is what is there oh there's a synonym i've already thought of intrigued or transfixed or you could use entranced okay so let's see if that would make sense the contents transfixed me everything told a story the contents entranced me so it's almost like he has a spell on him from all of these objects okay the meaning of that word, mesmerised, is to capture the complete attention of someone, to transfix them, almost hit, like hypnotise them. Okay, last one before you go off and try some of this on your own. So we've got the word eccentric. First of all, it's not a verb, nor that. It's not ending in an ed. I can't put the word to in front of it. Mm, so it must be something else. If I look here, I've got straight after the word, I've got a noun. So this before it is describing the collection. So that's a key point. It is before the noun, so it's describing the noun, so it is an adjective. All right, let's go ahead and start reading the word in context. To the left of the chair was a low wooden table littered with the most unusual and somewhat eccentric collection of objects. But every one of them told a story about Dahl's life. So if I'm thinking about, there might be a little bit strange, they're unconventional, they're, they're uncommon, I don't often see them. They might be a little bit strange. Okay, so let's try and put one of those, or, or a bit odd, an odd collection. Try and put one of those words in, does it still make sense? Might put odd in there or strange, and it would. So this the word eccentric means slightly unconventional, it might be a bit strange or odd. Okay, year five, your task for today is to identify the meaning of these words here all picked from the text. Obviously, we've looked at a few of them. We've looked at mesmerized, so you should be okay with that one. Eccentric and residing. So top tips at the side there as well. Remember to read the word in the whole sentence, or if you're struggling, either the sentence before and after as well. Try to think about what type of word is it? So is it a verb? Sometimes if it's in the past, in the past tense, sorry, it will be ending in ed, not always if you've got an irregular. 
past tense verb, but you should be able to put the word to in front of that verb to see if it makes sense. You might try and think of the root word as well to help you identify the word type. Then you can think of some synonym, synonyms, which will then lead you on to be able to say the meaning of that word. Okay. I don't just want another word that means the same in this box here. Okay, so for example, I don't just want you to write odd in the word accent next to the words eccentric there or strange or unconventional. I want a full sentence explaining it. So starting the word eccentric means and then finish off the sentence. Okay, looking forward to seeing those that work, boys and girls. Thank you for listening. Bye.